For the purpose of this video, I will be using a WordPower 60 basic vocabulary file. Within TouchChat, there are there are many vocabulary files that you can use for your students. What I like about the basic vocabulary files, so there's a 42 basic and a 60 basic, is that the basic vocabulary files provide additional symbolic language support. So if you have a student that is truly symbolic language learner and, and user, this allows them to have access to language um, you know, throughout their day. What's nice about having the additional symbolic language support is that if you have an emergent reader, this provides the text and the symbol. So as that student is learning text and how to read, they're able to also rely on the symbols so that they are still able to communicate. So if we look at the, the home page of the WordPower 60 Basic, you can see that language is organized by color, and this is based off of Fitzgerald Kate. Um, the nouns are in yellow, the verbs are in green, and the prepositions are in, are in blue. This language is going to be embedded to, in all the pages of the vocabulary file. So for example, if I go into groups and I'm going into food, you can see it's the same core language. You have, you have your nouns, you have an associated and an appropriate verb, and then you have an area in white. This is the area where a student's personal fringe, their, pers their favorite foods can be, can be programmed. I just want you to, to understand that with this embedded core language, you really have to be very careful where you're adding a word. The Touch Chat vocabulary file has thousands of words within the system. So if you don't see a word or if the word is or a symbol and if it's not in the area that you want it to be, the, your best bet to do is to find where it is, see if it makes sense. If you have to move the symbol, you always can move the symbol, but you just have to be mindful of where you, your programming language. Because of the predictability and the embedded core language, and the next logical words, you really have to make sure that you're not programming a symbol um, in, a, in a button that predicts or has additional functions that would, that would really make the language then either not accessible correctly or it would prevent the student from interacting with the system efficiently. So for example, back to the home page there's a let button. This was a new update recently, probably within the year. Let's, Let's allows the student to ask the communication partner to join them in either an activity. Under favorite things, it allows the student to ask somebody quickly, you know, jump let's jump trampoline. on the trampoline. Let's, let's go back to favorite things, listen, listen to, to music. music. So Initially, in the previous example, in the previous previous assignment, I was talking about having to update the system to have access to the most current uses of the device. The let symbol is one of those examples. If your student has an older vocabulary file, they will not have access to the let's icon. So you have to really be mindful if your student is using the most updated system and you have to make a judgment call of whether those new features are beneficial for your student and their communication. So on to the next logical words. If you were to select go on that wow. home page, it predicts some examples. It gives you some language that the student can interact with and they're not having to dig too deep into the system to communicate quickly and effectively. Let's go for, for a walk. walk. Go. Wow. To the, bathroom. to the bathroom. So this language is already embedded, it's already programmed, and the next logical words allows the student to access this language quickly, effectively, off the home screen for the majority of the part. Same thing with turn. Turn. Turn, turn the page, turn it up, turn it down, turn it on, turn it off, turn it over, turn it around. So it gives the students the next logical word after they select turn, of some options that they might need to participate in that communicative activity. My well, predicts to my turn. my turn, my, my turn, my favorite, my favorite. I want it my, my way. way. 
So part of our role as facilitator is really getting an idea of what language is embedded within the system and allows us to, to model different communicative interactions, right? Because our goal is to get beyond requesting and just allow our student to participate within the activities of their daily routine. Um, so what I like about Touch Chat is that it provides that quick, effective communication um, that's appropriate, that sounds grammatically correct, so that our students don't have to really worry about how their messages are sounding because this system provides the um, conjugation for anything, for any of the messages. Um, it's embedded. I do want to say that you are able to... No. To to conjugate yourself if you needed to. So go, when I select go, I have the past went. tenses went, go, go going. going. But, but within the next logical words, you have some of that conjugation is already embedded. So uh, I am yeah. going. going, that's the prediction of this, of this communication system. And that's what allows the student to create messages. They sound grammatically appropriate and provides the right model for them, especially if they're learning to, um, if they're also starting verbal language as well. I also spoke about the, um, the keyboard. So because I have the most updated version, of touch chat I have the most updated keyboard so looking at the keyboard what it allows you to do is it allows you to find a word which has been this has been in other in other um, versions as well so if I was looking for dog and I want to find dog by using find word I'll be able to see the motor patterns I have to go into groups I have to go into pets and dog. I select dog one thing that you have to note for example, my group page, I've hidden some words, I've hidden some categories because I'm using this, this vocabulary file to teach a student how to access language. If there is a symbol that's hidden, you're not gonna be able to find it within find words. So you have to be very mindful of that. You may look for a word and you'll say, well, how, does it not, how do we not have access to bed? You probably have access to it. Um, it's under furniture, but furniture is hidden. So you have to be aware that you have to un unveil or unmask some, some of your category symbols so that you have access to all of the language. Back to the keyboard, there's also predictability. So if I was typing in dog, dog will, will pop up there. If I'm typing in um, food, so this is for some of our students that have the ability to use symbols and they can also use the keyboard. So if I wanted to say, uh, I want, want to, eat, to eat and I'm not seeing what I want here, I want to be able to select food and I'm pretending it's not there. I can go into my keyboard. I have to go back home. Oh, I, I want, want to eat. To eat. And if I was going to type, food, I'm able to use that keyboard to insert language where I want it to go. So I was able to finish that sentence by typing. Let's say I wanted to change and I wanted to say I am eating food. I can use this symbol down here. This is a cursor. And now look at all the examples you have. So I can go backwards by character, I can go backwards by word, I can go to the front of the sentence. So it really allows your students to create a message and modify it without having to clear all over again, which helps our students to, it helps to prevent their frustration. So I'm going to go forward and I want to say, I am, am, I'm going to go forward again.
I'm not getting the predictability because I'm still connected to food, but I'm going to go backwards. Hmm. And I can say now I am eating food. So again, this is just another way for your student to interact with this communication system. I hope you find it informational. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me.